Hello, it's Michael here from EduKits. Earlier today, we launched a new version of our drag and drop code kit software. I'd love to show you today some of the exciting new visual changes and features that have been added to the product to make it better and easier to use than ever before. As always, you can access CodeKit from our website. We'll put a link to the application in our top menu bar. I'm going to click that now to launch the application. The first thing you'll notice is our new loading screen and then our new quick settings modal where you can select all the settings you need to get started quickly and easily with CodeKit. Firstly, select the product from EduKits you're using or you can simply select Arduino. Next, we've got an appearance option where you can try out our new dark mode interface option or you can click this slider here to switch back to our traditional light mode interface, which you will be familiar with if you've used CodeKit in the past. I'm gonna switch this back to dark mode because that's my personal preference. Lastly, we have an advanced mode, which I'll talk to you about later. So let's click the get started button and take a look. Under the hood, you'll see a lot of changes that we've made to the interface. It looks very different to some of our previous versions, but a lot of the main elements are the same and in the same positions. So if you have used CodeKit before, the interface itself will feel very familiar. On the left, we have all our different block categories, which group different blocks, which can be dragged and dropped into the main workspace. Everything's color coded as well. So input output blocks are all the same color, Maths blocks are the same color, variables are the same color, you can't see them yet because they haven't been created, and functions are also the same color. This makes it super easy to find your way around the CodeKit interface. As with all releases, we have instant code generation which occurs in the panel to the right. You can see if you haven't added any blocks, we prompt you to do so because obviously there's no code there. And as you add them, you can see the code writes itself. You don't have to do anything or have any kind of setup. As you add more blocks or rearrange them, you can see the code changes to reflect that as well. You can add functions, you can rename things and all of those changes happen instantly. That's one of the best features of CodeKit. Once you have finished writing your code, you can either copy it to your clipboard with the button up there, or you can download the code. The download code button is really useful because it doesn't just download an INO file, but it downloads a complete zip package which puts the INO file in a folder ready for you to open in the Arduino IDE if you'd like to upload. A new feature we've added, which hasn't been in previous releases at all, is our settings modal. You can access this with the cog icon in the top menu bar. This loads a modal which has options for you to select your Arduino board, general settings like dark mode and advanced mode, but also a new block loader, which I'll show you now. You can see the checkboxes over here have different options, and these are linked to the categories in the sidebar here, which are currently blurred out, but as I've said before, are used to group blocks which you can drag and drop onto the workspace. As you can see, some categories like timing and messaging are currently disabled, but we can enable them by clicking on them and a check will appear in the box. As it says in the bottom, these changes are saved automatically. So once we hit the close button, the editor will make those changes. And you can see in the sidebar, we now have options for timing and messaging. Now, these are two new categories we've added in this release, which add even more blocks than before to the workspace for you to build even better projects. Under timing, we've got our traditional delay and uh, runtime functions, but now we have options for microseconds, which is a powerful option for more advanced users. And we also have an option to terminate your program. Next, we have the messaging tab, which opens up a world of opportunities with serial reading and writing. And there's lots of options for setup, sending and receiving, including uh, how you want to handle line breaks. As you can see, we can set up the serial bitrate and we can send messages. Now you can either send messages directly as text or numbers, which you can put from the maths or text options, but you can also pull directly from variables and print those, which will be helpful, especially if you're reading from sensors and handling that data and you want to send it over the serial monitor. Now, I want to show you advanced mode, which is something a lot of our users have been looking for. 
let's click onto advanced mode and activate that. We will close the settings modal and check it out. Now, you won't notice anything instantly, but the biggest changes will occur under the input and output section. So let's open that now. Actually, I'll, I'll clear my box first. Under input and output, you'll notice that there are now four new blocks here. They look similar to the previous analog and digital reading and writing options, but I'll drag one onto here so we can see what's changed. Like with our previous releases, you can select the pin and the state of a particular pin when you're writing digitally. However, we can set both the pin and the state to variables. So let's create an integer variable for the LED pin. I'll click OK to create that. And we can drag the value of that into where the number is. And you can see in the code, it sets up the variable and it also sets the value of that pin to the variable. Next, I'll set up a variable for the state, which is a Boolean type. I'll hit OK, and then I will drag that into the state. And as you can see, it sets up the variable for that, and it writes the code accordingly. We can also set those variables. Here we go. We'll set this to pin 13, which is the default LED pin on a number of Arduino boards. And you can also set the pin state. So we'll grab a high and stick that in there. So this is a very simple implementation of this new feature, but it allows lots of opportunities. Now this demo just scrapes the surface of what we've added in this release. And I'm sure you'll find heaps of new features and visual changes as you get in and use the software. As always, we would love to hear your feedback on CodeKit. It is still a developing piece of software. We're working very hard on adding new features all the time and listening to your feedback. And you can let us know what you think by clicking on this support icon, which will take you to a contact form on the main EduKit's website, where you can send us any message, any comment you'd like about CodeKit, and a member of our team will get back to you. So feel free to get in, give CodeKit a try, it's completely free to use and we'd love to hear what you think about the new release.